All right, moving right along. Let's hit the comma key, go all the way over here, and we'll get this uh, sim head cover. Go ahead and hit no. And let's go ahead and follow these instructions as well. So the first thing it's telling you is we need to have a collision volume. And one more time, we have texture turned on, so we get a nice little texture on there. And we have eyes and a head that it's going to calculate for our collision volume. So let's go over here to our dynamics menu. And again, if you're just joining us and you've missed the first couple of videos of the series, I'll go over here to the dynamics menu and just drag this over here. Uh, so over here, we have a collision volume. So let's go ahead and tap that on. And if you already have a collision volume, just hit recalc and that'll recalculate your collision volume to be, you know, again, whatever's not selected in your scene is going to be considered a collision volume. Now this time, instead of hitting like B, C, K, which is our cloth hook brush, if you're new to ZBrush, B is your brush menu. So you just hit B to launch that up. C will narrow it down to the cloth, cloth brushes. And we've been using uh, K, which is a uh, cloth hook. Uh, there is another thing here. So if we go to B, T, uh, that's transpose, and now we have a transpose cloth. So by default, you're using the regular transpose, and that's BTR. And there's a transpose smart mask, and then there's also a transpose cloth now. So if we hit this, or hit C, that'll go ahead and give us, it looks just like the other one, it's a gizmo. But the cool thing about this is, if it's uh, you're using it on an object that has that's selected and we've calculated a collision volume, it's going to treat this as dynamic cloth. So we can pull this, and as soon as we hit that collision volume, it's going to want to stick and interact with that underlying collision volume while we're using this gizmo. So we can go through here. Uh, we have X symmetry turned on. Let's tap X. It's basically transform and activate symmetry, turning it off. And we'll go through here and we can kind of just mash this around the head. And you can see, again, it's interacting with that head here. Now there's a couple of interesting things. And again, we'll get deeper into this. This is kind of just a quick preview overview and having fun with the new uh, project files here. But if we go through here and start contracting this head, you're gonna see we're getting some wrinkles. And in order to see this a little bit better, I'm gonna go down here to the texture map and just turn that texture off. So now we can see these wrinkles a little more. And in fact, let's make this a little bit brighter so you can kind of see just of making it a different brighter color basically. So as we're going through here and we're scaling this, we can scale it out, we can scale it in, and we're gonna go ahead and start getting wrinkles. And while we're scaling it in, it is going to conform to our underlying uh, surface here. So, you know, basic gizmo functionality. One more time, if you're new to ZBrush, go over here to the intro to ZBrush, or you can go to my art station and somewhere on here is an intro to ZBrush. There it is, ZBrush for ideation. You can click through that and it's got the videos and also any anything new that comes out, like what's new 2019, what's new in 2020, pretty soon what's new in 2021 is what I'm recording as we speak. You can go check those videos, uh, videos out as well. But essentially we can go through here and we can scale this and then we can hold down Alt and we can change the orientation of our gizmo and you can actually move this all around. And then we can scale this in and again, just have it conform to our surface. So you see as I pull it against the face, let's go ahead and rotate this around. It's actually sticking to our surface here. And if I pull back, it's gonna wanna push against that surface there. So very cool results. And just like in our previous videos, if you wanna go over here and you know play with your inflate. So if you have a, one little cushion around here and like we discussed before, we have a dynamic thickness turned on. If we turn that off, that's our actual geometry that's conforming. We can turn that back on. We can change that offset so it comes out from the mesh a little bit more and is a little bit thicker uh, on the outside. We can cr increase the collision volume resolution to get more accurate results. And another thing too that's important is something we talked about in the previous video is the speed also affects it. Now when you're running a simulation, we were able to slow down the gravity uh, or increase the simulation iterations. Another thing to consider is how fast you move this collision mesh is going to allow it more or less calculations. So the slower you actually go through here and use your cloth brushes, the more accurate it will allow that collision to be. If you go through here and you're just like really fast, see it kind of it didn't have enough time to calculate those relationships to maintain that surface area so keep that in mind as you're going through here as I'm moving those simulation iterations are running so you know you can increase this so it, it'll run more iterations on every movement that you're making so that'll help with an uh, accuracy as well um, but also the speed at which you're moving is going to affect the accuracy and how well it picks up so again don't go through here and just be like Phew. you know that's not going to give us enough time to again calculate those edge relationships to maintain the surface area, but if you move it slow enough, it's able to run those iterations and give you a pretty nice, accurate uh, result.